oh, this thing's, I, I can't look like this for a video. Hang on. <laughs> That's much better. Let me show you five pro-level effects you can do in the free version of CapCut right now, starting with that match cut we, we just did. You can use a match cut for a million different things. In our case, a clothing change. You can throw a ball into the air, and then when you catch it, you're in a different location. You can, like, pan down to your feet and then pan up, and you go from, like, an office to a beach. And in just regular edits and in cinema, in movies, they use match cuts all the time just to create continuity between scenes. For example, if I I was talking over here in one scene and they cut to me talking in another scene they'd have my head in the same place they would match my head to fit the same place so that it was continuity and it wouldn't be so jarring so kind of look for that when you're watching movies or tv shows or other editors that are really good and think of creative ways that you can use this for us to do it i'm going to make it really easy for you you can download all the elements that i use in this video using the link in the description below and i suggest you pause and do that now so that you can follow along and this will make this a lot easier there's some really cool effects we're going to cover right now. For the match cut, I've got these two shots of me before and after the clothing change, and we're going to just trim it up a little bit. Actually, before I trim it, I prefer to have the track height a little higher so I can see what's going on. So I change the track height to tall, and I change the waveform height to 60%. That way I can see what the video is, and I can see what the audio is. Next, I'm going to position my plate at the beginning, and let's listen. Oh, this thing's, I, I can't look like this for a video. Hang on. And here I snapped, and then I snapped again over here. So I'm going to use that waveform as the starting point. And I'm going to use the keystroke W to add an edit here and delete all of this. Bam. So that just saves you keystrokes. And I can see that I made this snap right here. So I'm going to add an edit right here in front of it by hitting the keystroke Q. So it's going to add an edit here. It's going to cut this and delete all that and slide everything over. Bam. And let's see if it lined up. Hang on. <laughs> That's much better. So perfect, that's all there is to it. It's just lining stuff up. Now for this to work properly, you should make sure that you film both shots with the same lighting on a tripod. And if you didn't, you can do a little cheat. If things don't line up exactly, you can scale one face to line up with the other face. So if, for example, if this shot was a little farther away and this was a little closer, I could have zoomed in this shot to line it up. So that's just kind of a hack in case you didn't shoot it right correctly to make cuts actually match. Now let me show you how to do motion tracking in CapCut. That's kind of an advanced feature that CapCut's made a simplified version of, and it works pretty well. In the world of Hollywood, they have apps that are just for motion tracking, or you can use After Effects, and it's a cool feature. It allows you to track an object to something that's moving in the video. In this case, we want to track me moving across there in that scooter and have something follow me. We could use a graphic, another video, or in our case, we're just going to use text. So we're going to click on Text, select Select default text, drag to the timeline, make it last the duration of our video clip here. And we wanted to say something nifty, like how about nifty, exclamation point. And we want it to be bold and visible and easy to see. So we're going to choose a big old font, like how about maybe bangers. And we're going to position it where we want it to start. And I'm going to angle it a little bit and maybe make the text a little bit more interesting by adding a little uh, stroke around it like that, a little bit less stroke, and that's probably good. Make it a little bit smaller, rotate it around a little more, and bam. Now I want this text to follow me. To do that, I simply click on tracking, and I choose motion tracking, and I position this box around the item I want to track, which in this case is me. I want to make sure it's just tracking me and nothing else. For this to work well, you know, you probably want to be on a tripod, but you don't have to. And one thing that kind of helps it is to turn off scale and distance. It's a little more accurate like that. And you just hit start. And you want it to be set to both so it tracks backwards and forwards. So if I had it in the beginning here, it would track backwards and forwards. In this case, it doesn't really matter. We'll just leave it there. And we hit start. It's going to think about it for a second. And then, literally, I didn't pause the video. That's how long it took. And let's see if it worked. And bam, it's tracking me, following me across the whole thing. A super easy way to add a very professional effect. You can have something in your hand, be moving, and have something on your head. There's a bunch of different things you can do with tracking. Just be super creative. If you like learning tips like this and you want to get great at editing and you're kind of a beginning to intermediate editor, you're in luck. I am in the process right now of upgrading my course, Edit with Trevin Master CapCut. Version one is out now, it's super relevant, and normally it's $97. When version two comes out, it's gonna be 
$129. But right now, until version 2 is released, which is around November 15th, you can get version 1 for $49. And when version 2 comes out, you get it for free. So just click on the link in the description or go to mastercapcut.com and enter the coupon code, heck yes, at the time of checkout. You're going to love it. Grab it like right now before the price goes up. The next super cool pro level effect you can do in CapCut is color isolation. In this case, we're going to take this video and isolate the purple and make everything else black and white. Make sure the clip is highlighted in the timeline. Go under adjust HSL. That stands for hue, saturation, and luminance. Luminance is brightness. And I just go to each of these colors and I decrease the saturation for all of them except the color I want to keep. So I don't need red. I don't need orange, I don't need yellow, and it's kind of done already. Don't need green, and I don't need this blue. Let's see if it modifies it all. Yeah, that's it. And then the rest of these I can probably leave. Yeah, that little pink adds to the purple. And now we have a video clip that's got one thing in color. Look at this. This is the greatest purple dog ball in the history of Earth. Cherish it. What the heck? I find that I talk to myself all the time. Wouldn't it be great if I could show myself talking to myself in real life? I mean, in video. Here's how you do it. You want to film two clips. Here is clip one. Here is clip two. And notice here I'm on the left side of the screen. Here I'm on the right side of the screen. You want to make sure that your camera is on a tripod and that the lighting doesn't change between shots for this to work really well. And you just put one clip on top of the other and try to line them up. Now. I created a tiny little script of me talking to myself. You want to make a script and then kind of practice leaving space for your other self to reply. And if you do it right, it should be pretty easy. So I'm going to line it up here. I can see the waveforms. I can see, well, here's where I start to talk. I talk again and maybe line it up just a little bit more like that. And bam, I'm going to trim both of these clips. I'm going to turn track magnet off so everything doesn't slide over. Type the letter Q, drag both these over like that. And then here's me talking, talking again, talking, 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 talking talking and at least not with my tongue. Oh yeah, uh, that's me talking to the other one. I just can't see it. How do you make this work? Well, I just need to crop out or create a mask to get rid of this on the top layer so I can see the bottom layer. To do that, I just click on the top clip only. I select video mask. And by the way, if it doesn't work, it's probably because you were left over on adjust and there's a mask over there as well. You don't want to click on that one. You want to click on video first, then click on mask, then click on add mask. Now all a mask does is it cuts out an area. So I can cut out a circle just so you can see, you know, cut out a circle here. I can cut out a rectangle and it just leaves a blank spacer and everything else. You can see how that really works. Let me just turn off this bottom layer and you can see that's all a mask that just creates a shape. You can even do text. You can use film. So there's a bunch of things, but in our case, super simple. We're just going to split the scene in the middle. So I click on this guy and I click on the rotate thing and I flip it around until I can see what is underneath and see how I turn it off. I better turn it back on so I can see it. And bam, we're pretty much done. Now the lighting changed a tiny bit and the camera moved a tiny bit, but you can kind of cheat that really easily by just dragging this over a little bit so it feathers it. And you can see how it's feathered. If I turn this layer off right here, you can see it's kind of feathered a little bit. It's smoother so you don't see a hard line there. And we are literally done. You don't want to see the white line when you're playing it back. So you just click anywhere, go to the beginning, and let's watch this, this masterpiece. Hey, hey, you look terrible. I know, I feel like I'm coming down with something. Just don't give it to me. Yeah, I promise not to kiss you. At least not with my tongue. Hey, hey. What? Supers! Now people won't think you're crazy when you're talking to yourself. If you ever seen those cool YouTubers, they'll start with a video full screen like this and then they'll get these cinema bars closing in like this. That looks pretty cool, right? Looks like an actual widescreen movie. It's easy to do in CapCut. Let's go ahead and create cinema. All you do is you jump into effects and you type in cinema. Let's see if it worked. Cinema, I think it did. Yeah, look at that. See if I roll over, I can see cinema. Bars happening. I just drag it onto the timeline, stretch it out to last the duration of this magical cinematic masterpiece, and watch this. Boom, it brings the cinema bars down and creates a widescreen version of our movie, which makes it look so much more cinematic and professional. If you want to get all cinematic and professional, the first thing to do is buy my course right there. Well, it's still freaking cheap. And then you want to watch that video right there, which will teach you how to film cinematic videos. It's one of my favorite videos and you should watch it as soon as you buy my course.